Welcome to another powerful and exciting episode here on Testify on the station where you look and leave Hope TV. My name is Maria Makao Mondi. I appreciate everyone that is tuned in and I know for sure that this story this day is going to be a blessing to you. Now today we have Maureen Ashira, such a powerful story. I cannot even preempt her story because I mean you just want to hear it from her. Thank you so much for coming Maureen. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, mine. Oh, uh, mine, Master. Uh, let's start by what you do. What do you do on a day-to-day? -day? I know you're born again. Mm -hmm. You're in ministry. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, um, my eight-to-five uh, job is I'm a jewelry designer. Ah. Yes, yeah, so I, I design authentic African, you know, pieces. Mm. Yeah, sometimes also buy and sell, just collecting, you know, very mm -hmm. unique stuff. Oh, you're yes. very artistic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm also um, a worshipper. You know? mm. Of course, when you say you're a worshipper, everybody's a worshipper. Well, I'm a music minister. Oh, yes. Yeah, with uh, my music on YouTube and I get to travel a lot as a minister to, you know, God's people. Mm. Yeah. All right. And yeah. your voice can tell it. Like, it's, it's like so rich oh yeah yeah you can uh, tell you sing. yeah okay so let's go to you i know you have quite <clears throat> a story that is going to be an encouraging an encouragement maureen yeah let's begin from your childhood mm -hmm. where were you born mm -hmm. you have siblings mm -hmm. let's talk about your growing up uh, um well i was born here in nairobi mm -hmm. um at pumwani i think at some point my parents used to live in nairobi mm -hmm. And then, um, so my dad got a job with Kikomi, mm -hmm. so he went to, we now moved back to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's just where I grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, better part of my childhood, I was just in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have siblings? Yes, yes. I have one? two brothers, no, I'm the second one. I have two brothers and an and elder sister who, yeah, who lives in, in France. Oh wow! Yes. So now, born into this world, yeah. what happens to you? How do? You, how is your upbringing like? Ah, I remember. Um, my parents were well. They didn't have. I, I believe they were. Um, they were happy with each other, mm -hmm. but now I think when my dad lost his job, then now trouble began from there. You know, mm -hmm. then he began drinking, and he would drink so much, and he became violent. He would hit my mom. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't even have very good memories, you know, because he would just actually just, you know, beat her, you know, in our presence. We are four. So half the time we're always running, you know, in the wow. middle of the oh. night. <laughs> wow, so, so yeah, so my mother just decided, you know what, she's not staying in that marriage now with my biological dad. So she moved. We now, he moved out, I believe, mm -hmm. yeah, because we remained with my mom. So I remember him really trying to come back. In fact, I remember one time, because I was, I was both parents' favorite. You know? Oh, okay. So right. my dad would try to use me to come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. You know, it was not easy. So one time, I think he came, we were living somewhere, and so he brought a, a, you know, a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. And so, because I saw him and my mom, it was a Monday. Mondays were her off days. She was a saloonist. Oh. So he brought, uh, he, he carried, you know, that loaf of bread and I could see him, you know, and I was very excited. So when he gives me the bread and because my mom was in the house, uh, so I go, you know, to the house with the bread. And so she's like, oh, my mom was very mkali, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> A disciplinarian. Yeah. So she's like, where have you gotten that from? And I'm like, you know, because I'm very excited. I'm like, hey, dad is here. She took it. Got out of the house, saw him, she hit him with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. and it was never a good time. Of course, now he, he really tried to come back. Until I think we hear he married another lady and now that's where he died. Oh. Uh, in that other marriage. So anyways, you know, tradition, I think uh, we the news was brought to us. Because mm -hmm. I remember I was in class five. Mm -hmm. And I remember that time... My mother looked at us, the four of us, and she was like, Mutu ajaribu kulia. Ah. So she sat us all down. I still remember that house. We all sat, we were from school. Mm -hmm. So we all sat down and she, she used to beat us with a hockey stick. Oh. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> we used to call that term semo kweli. Yeah. So my mother, when one person makes a mistake, she would beat everybody. Mm. So when that news was brought, you know, of my father's death, she was like, mutu wa jaribu kulia. And that, I think that that pain, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Because I loved my father. I believe all my, my siblings loved him. And so she packed everybody's, you know, clothes and put them there and sat us there and, and she held that. That's the amount of bitterness she had, you know, because mm -hmm. of the things she had gone through. Yeah. And so we didn't cry because she was like, you kijaribu kulia atakugonga and you, she kicks you out. Wow. So we didn't cry. We didn't go for the funeral. Wow. So, yeah. So you had to just like take the pain yeah. internally. Yeah. Wow. We didn't cry. Oh, yeah. And what's going through your mind at that point, or did it didn't bother you then? I was just afraid of the beating, though, probably, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I wasn't thinking of, I was just thinking if I try crying, she would hit me. My mom would hit us and still rush us to hospital because we are wounded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, proper yeah. discipline. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so so now mm. your da you lose your dad. Mm. Now how is life? How do you progress from that? So, of course, now she went ahead and remarried. Now, again, my stepdad was so very violent. So, again, half, most of the nights would be running to either police stations to, you know, mm -hmm. to seek for, you know, shelter. Because either maybe he stabbed her, maybe he's what? done what. So, that was basically my life. But she was, she, she was a Catholic. She loved her God. Mm -hmm. And she was a hardworking woman because she raised us. You know, all of us, she took us to school. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so then she dies. Um, you know, when you're doing your Form 4 mm -hmm. and you're finishing that last paper mm -hmm. and you're going back home. Mm -hmm. So I go home and I still have my uniform and then a few minutes later she's dead. No way. Yeah. What, what, what was the cause? So when my second dad um, died, mm -hmm. she remarried. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but now this one was funny yeah. because she wasn't looking for a husband. Mm -hmm. We just wanted um, a house boy. Mm -hmm. You know? All right. We were tired of girls. So, but either mistreating us. So, she told us, you know, okay, so I'll try and get a house boy for you guys, you know? So, the guy he brought in as a house boy is the one who turned to be now her husband. And this is the one now who killed her. Because now she was hardworking, she had acquired, you know, some, you know, mm -hmm. um, things here and there. Mm -hmm. So these guys really wanted her property. Mm -hmm. really. And actually they took, they took um, her house, her piece of land, they took everything. In fact, when she died, because she died in the house, uh, this, this, this dad would, would um, nyemele her and hit her. So she had so many broken ribs, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so many health complications because of the beatings. This guy would beat her so badly. Yeah, so when she died, I remember, because I was just there and I'm thinking, hey, so what happens? Mm -hmm. I've just come from school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And in fact, my form two and four were the worst years of anyone's, you know, school life. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't afford anything, even pads, you know. And your mom is working. And she's working, but all the money is going to these guys. You know, yeah, we would we would even take, you know, just ordinary skuma mm -hmm. with no salt, no nothing, just skuma and ugali. And she's buying this guy chicken and water and they're eating in the bedroom. So we, that was a life and we were like, what has this guy done to my mother? And were you in boarding school? Yes. So all this you would see during holiday season? Yeah, the holiday seasons. So what happens, maybe, as, do you see her pass out? Is there anything she tells you or you as a uh, children? Or it's just quietly? Gone? My sister had already left. She was living out of town. My follower brother was in school. So the youngest was very little. So it's just me. And actually found the TV was on. She had bought a new, she loved leather. So she had bought new leather seats. So she slept on, on, you know, the big one, the three-seater, mm. just next to the door. So I'm like, ah, she's looking straight, but I'm happy to see her, you know. Mm -hmm. So she's just lying there, and I'm thinking, this TV is on in her state. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, so I see her. She's not talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I see her just, you know, um, like she's pointing towards the door with her eyes. And I thought she wanted me to carry her out. Mm -hmm. So I try lifting her. And there's no dead weight, you know, if you've ever been close to someone who's about to die. Mm -hmm. So that scared me because I couldn't, she was too heavy. Mm -hmm. So I dropped her because of fear and ran out. There's a, a woman she loved, she used to call her her mama. Mm -hmm. So I went to get that woman. So just coming back, mm -hmm. that's how she had died. We just found her just looking, the way she was looking out. So it's this mama who now starts wailing and screaming and closing her eyes. Mm -hmm. so that's how she died. And these guys come, mm -hmm. uh, this step uh, dad and their family, mm -hmm. and they put her body down mm -hmm. and they carry everything from the house. And they say they're going to keep them from, you know, keep them. <laughs> from oh my us. goodness. So now, oh my goodness, like there's no, I mean, there's no perfect death, but just on the day when you're clearing school, yeah. it's that's some, um, that's some, um, you know. Now what happens now, because you're probably now 18, mm. your mom, the only parent you had mm. is gone. Mm. How do you figure out life? So I thought maybe, let me do acting, you know, cause it's, it's what I was good at. So I joined this theater group mm -hmm. and because they are doing school production, they're doing what, so, and I was good at what I was doing. So they would give me a role here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my first house was 950 Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere, you know, yeah, in some yeah. dingy place. Yeah. But I thank God. Yeah, yeah. Because I had a house. <laughs> yeah, and 950 that time was quite some money. Hey, <laughs> yeah, so, so if, if we go for, you know, um, some uh, recording, some set or whatever, and I'm paid 500 or maybe 300, you try and save up. Yeah, so I never used to really eat. I was too skinny for life. <laughs> oh, why is that? But what do you want to eat? <laughs> <laughs> Everything you, can, you want is not affordable. You get. Yeah. And guys, you say, oh, you have a good body. Oh, but they didn't know half the time. I was just starving. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, because you see when scripture says everybody has that, you know, that inclination. I mean, from childhood, you still have that towards God, mm -hmm. that conscience, that God oh, conscience. Right. So it was always in me. I always knew somehow in all this, God would make a way. Then I get pregnant, you know? Wow. And I'm like, yeah, so now what? But of course, because this guy had now uh, just taken me by force, because I had not known any man, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that was the first man I was knowing. He was by force. And then he disappears. When he reappears, he says that is not, you know, his responsibility. I should chuck that pregnancy. Mm. So who do you want to tell that you are just honestly? <laughs> <laughs> who do you even tell? Who do you even tell? Yeah. You know? So I remember going to some church and I cried out to God and I was like, hey, if I try aborting, I would die. Mm -hmm. Let me just carry this. And so you decide to carry the pregnancy. Yeah. And you, you know, I like what you're saying. You had inclination to, I would say, godliness. Yes. Had someone, anyone ever preached to you or it was just innate? You see, we grew up, you know, when the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. We grew up listening to Sissy Winans. My mother loved Sissy. My mother loved Rebecca Melope, mm -hmm. you know, so... I would listen to a lot of gospel music, mm -hmm. you know, and I would see her pray, you know. So I always knew there's a higher being, you know. Mm -hmm. I always knew there's someone, there's an authority up there. You get. Someone you can trust. Someone I can trust. Mm -hmm. So I always, and, and of course now going to Catholic, mm -hmm. you know the way, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to sound a bit insensitive. Mm -hmm. You see the way they always look so holy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the way they just carried I it. I was at fire that I was like, ish, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to be this close to God and just be this. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of all, I just always wanted to be close to this being. So that explains you going to church yeah. as the first place. Yes, because oh. I had no one to run to mm -hmm. except so him. So how did, I mean, I know you how you knew you were pregnant, but you see you're young. Mm. 
it's the first time yes it was forced on you yes what you know did you go to the hospital did you just take a test uh -huh. you know what what happened at some point i couldn't pay my 950 house rent mm -hmm. so i talked to this friend of mine she's late mm -hmm. and i tell her the way i'm really struggling you know she says come my mother loves you my dad loves you come to our house mm -hmm. so i went to live with them so and this was even after now this incident so and i was very open i just told them what had happened you know and so the whole family now they go look for this guy because they knew where he was staying and they found out alpasha toroka so the mom said you stay here we will take care of you me i had not known it was actually three months you know later so this, you know, the morning sickness, the puking, me, I didn't know. So I just thought I'm sick. Then she's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm. Okay. So what happens, you get the, you, you, you decide to keep the pregnancy. Yeah. Then you get the child. Yeah. Are you still being accommodated by your friends? What happens? Does life just hit you? Um, or what do you do? They did. I mean, I always say, God has always been so merciful to me. God has always been so good. You know, he's literally a father to me. Mm. So these guys took care of me for one whole year. They said, you will not leave this place until when this girl is one year old. Mm. So they even employed a housemaid for me, you know. And I would just sit and nurse the baby, you know. Yeah, yeah so when she was one and a half years, uh, another friend of mine, now she wanted to relocate to Nairobi. So she says, Maureen, why can't I carry you to Nairobi? Mm. And that's how now I came to Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> the baby is already born. Yes. Now, I, you know, I just want to take you back a bit because uh, now you weren't anticipating the pregnancy. Mm -mm. Whatever happened, happened. Mm -hmm. Are you happy that you're pregnant? Do you love this child? Are you looking forward to being a mother? Who teaches you to figure that out? I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy about the pregnancy. In fact, half the time I was blaming myself, you know, for what happened. So actually during the pregnancy, I began drinking. I became a heavy drinker because I wanted that child to die. I was afraid of committing an abortion. Yeah, yeah. But either way, I wanted her to die. Mm. So I became a heavy drinker and I would smoke badly. I became a chain smoker. You know? Mm -hmm. So at some point I was like, yeah. Well, I also wanted to, you know, just also get to know how it feels like to be a mother and also see the baby, but I was afraid. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So at some point I remember I used to take about to smoke about two packets of cigarettes in a day. You know? Wow. And I would drink and not get drunk. I would drink hard stuff. Mm -hmm. And guys were like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But of course then, because now I had now, my art was now perfected, so I would get some media jobs here and there, and they were paying me well. So sometimes we'd go out and I... I remember one night I spent 60000 on alcohol. Mm. I always tell God, if you give me that money, I will spend it well. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, so, yeah, I, I wasn't happy. With myself, with the child. But you still carry her to yeah. Nairobi and mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. So how does life begin in Nairobi? So I lived with this lady, um, and I really thank her. She's called Betty, Betty a cook, just in case she gets to watch this someday. So she took me in with the baby. She loved my child. She loved me. So we used to live in Imara, Daima. And we lived in Imara, you know, until... Um, when Latifa was about two years, you know, two and maybe three months. Mm -hmm. Now that's when now I, I meet someone. Mm -hmm. I had seen him while doing my, you know, theatre trips. Okay. But he was way older than me. So he tells me, hey. so he lies to me that he's sick. No, now I'm in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But still trying to get uh, theatre jobs because that's all I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so spending most of my time maybe at KNT. Uh -huh. But it's Spain. Mm. So it's Spain. Mm. At least, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I'll do voiceovers, you know. Mm. So I get this. This guy tells me um, he had a child, a son, seven years then. So he says, the child calls me and like, 
ah, dad is not feeling well, sichi ni 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 ni. Then like, eh? Hey. And this is a guy who I would never be broke. I would just say I need. He would not even finish, you know. Mm. He would send me money, send me money. Kumbe was just trying to lure me, you know. Mm. Yeah, so I traveled to Kisumu to see this sick man. That's how he locked me up for six months. No way. <laughs> no. <laughs> and employed to my size. He lived in a big house. And you're with your daughter? Yes, and his son. Six months? Yes. What Not are you Not seeing doing? the outside world. No way. What, what were you doing? What was happening in, in the <laughs> six months? And I mean, did, was, I mean, did the son also fall prey to him? You know, just... Uh, lying to you that he's unwell like how do you tell a child to lie on your behalf i think a seven year old is just a seven year old mm. you know and i had seen that child i think once or twice and <clears throat> well usually i think i also have a way with kids so kids just love me mm -hmm. uh, yeah in fact i always say my friends are kids because mm -hmm. they're just so pure so that kid i think the first time he saw me he called me mom yeah, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, so he was young. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure he didn't even know. He just picked the phone and, yeah. you know, did as instructed. As instructed. Wow, okay, we're in. I, we have to take a break. <laughs> That's, I mean, six months locked up. Please just stay with us. We want to know what happens. You know, Maureen is in a house. She's locked up with the daughter and there's this man. What happens? This is the station where you look and live. Thank you for staying with us. We are still with Maureen Ashira. Such an um, interesting story. Let me say interesting because it's like a movie. Is it because you're an actor? <laughs> like, this is a, a movie. So now you, you started, you've set base in Nairobi. You're starting to settle in. Now this man calls you back to Kisumu again and this time around locked up. What's happening to you? Uh, he took away my phone. He took away... Actually, used to wear um, just free dresses. I would not do my hair. Mm. I literally never stepped out of the house except in his, you know, uh, command. Uh, oh yeah, just the with him, you know. If oh. he's going somewhere, then he would go. Mm. Otherwise, he would not. I would just stay in the house, and he would stock up the house. He, would, I remember, he would buy everything, and all this while he's trying to groom me to be a wife. Mm. And my mind is not there, you know. Wow. And and had you had he not done that, what, was there anything that you're feeling towards him before the locking up? He was a good man. I, I always say he was a good man. Just him, you know, ambushing me with that. Oh no. Maybe if he would have allowed me to process everything that has happened, you know, mm. then I would have maybe accepted. He was a good man. Okay. But now, of course, now the more I refused, the more now he also became violent. He began drinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so anytime I try, I remember one time a friend of mine, Betty now, Betty comes to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. So I tell him, please, uh, allow me to just use my phone, you know. So he gives me the phone and I'm calling this lady. And she says, Niko uh, Mahali, come and meet me, you know. Mm -hmm. So because she's worried, you know. I'm, I'm, where am I? So I tell this guy, please, allow me to just go and see Betty. Betty. Mm. And he says, okay. And he locks up the baby in the room. So you go. So me, uh -huh. I'm getting, because I'm thinking, mm -hmm. at least I get to go out now. Mm -hmm. So just when I'm preparing, I'm getting ready, eh, he came into the room. Mm -hmm. And he hit me, you know. No. Oh, my God. And you know, he was also a bit huge. Mm -hmm. I remember him just carrying me and throwing me, you know, on the bed, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I just knew, hey, so apa kutaumana. It's either he kills me or I kill him. Wow. So he had bought me a laptop. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, because now the room was this big, the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So the bed is just somewhere. So I'm just going around the bed because he can't unless he goes around. Yeah. 
So I hold the, because it's a table, so I hold the laptop and I just, you know, I begin dropping things, you know, zivunjuke. Mm. So I tell them, I'm going to break this laptop. You don't allow me to leave. And they thought it was a joke. So I just broke it. I just took it and smashed mm. on the wall, you yeah. know. And yeah. it's like, you're not going anywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to go and meet, you know, those other mm. men. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, God. You know? Yeah. And it was such a... So at some point, he opened the door and I ran to the kitchen and I got a knife. Wow. All this while the kids are locked in the other room. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to stab him because now I'm filled with rage and he's hit me so badly. And I just want my freedom. Yeah. This is somebody who's actually been having his way with you anytime, anyhow he wants it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And you have no one to, to talk to. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened. He tripped and fell on the floor in the kitchen and I was going to stab him. So that's when he says, okay, you go. Just go. Just go and leave the child. Wow. So I left. But I went to talk to someone to come and help me. So, right. yes. So that's, uh, so. how did you get out? Did someone come through after the six months? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine. You know, once in a while he would allow me, because, you know, the two Maasai, you know, Maasai only listens to one person. No mm. any other person will give him instructions. So he had two Maasai mm. at the gate. So once in a while... There's a, a point I actually now began playing, you know, wife, so he can give me back my freedom. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it's okay. You know, it's okay. I'll be your wife. Just just allow me to do what mm -hmm. I want to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he was very happy when I told him that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> then, but it was all plain pretend. Of course. That you could get your freedom. So, so uh -huh. eventually, how did you get out? So once in a while, I would say I want to go buy food. So he would allow me to go buy food, and I would talk to this friend of mine, this uh, the, uh, this guy, mm -hmm. and I would tell him what's happening, and he was like, "What? You know? Because no one can believe, you know." Mm. Like, so we began planning on how to, you know, yes. get me out of that place. Yeah. So this one particular night, mm -hmm. he also comes with backup. Oh. And there was war. You know, all this while people don't even know there's a woman in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? So, yeah, you just hear, that's my child, that's my child. And I'm like, okay, why is this? This baby is none of yours, but mm -hmm. all of them are now fighting, you know, for the baby. Yeah. That's my child, that's my child. So there was war until 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I think these other guys overpowered him. So he just allowed me to live. With your child. How old is your baby at that point? She's two years, six months, or two years, maybe nine there. So you go back? To Nairobi? No. Uh -huh. So this guy who rescues me from that, Kumbe has also been waiting for Marim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Father Lord. <laughs> the cycle. Ah, a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. So, of course, now we have, now I'm like, oh, thank God. So he's taking me to his house, you know, and I'm like, finally, mm -hmm. finally. So that night he's like, you stay here. You can't go anywhere. Yeah. You, you just be here. I've waited for you for so long. Just be here. Wow. And I'm like, well, at least this one I had a liking for. Oh, right. Yes. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So then I tell him, look, I would want to stay with you. At least allow me to go. Just clear yes, my head. Yes, yeah. Just, he refused. So he was like, no, you're not going. At, let me go then. You stay here with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes, I stayed there. Okay. For Six how more months. Okay, so that's but, a whole year. But I didn't want to. So it's against your will? Yeah. I didn't want to. So all this while I'm so bitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's piling up. I'm so bitter. I can't even look at him. And he doesn't get it? He doesn't get it. Anytime I want to leave, oh, he'll go and buy. See what he would... He would actually ch change everything in the house after every two weeks just to make me happy. Well, one time he went and called, and he was an orphan, you know. Mm. So he, he goes and calls the landlady and she sits me down. And I'm like, you people, you don't understand. Let me go, mm -hmm. you know. So one time uh, he goes to work and I just decide I'm also leaving. I just called a cab, packed everything I could pack and left. <laughs> <laughs> to where? 
<laughs> to another friend of mine. Okay, just for clarity. Just yeah. And at this point, uh, Maureen, where what, what what's your state with God? How how are you relating with God? At some point, I was so mad at God. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've had, I mean, you come through for people, but me. You know, I feel so alone. I'm mm -hmm. so mad at mm -hmm. God. But I still love music. Oh, you love music. Mm. It does something to you. Yeah. And so anytime I would, I would listen to a gospel music, a gospel song. Mm -hmm. mm. And it would encourage you. And now, you know, when you're going, to, when you're going through your pregnancy phase, and now you have your child, your daughter, mm -hmm. and it was bitter, mm -hmm. a bitter experience for you. You, mm -hmm. you weren't really looking forward to being a mother. Mm -hmm. When you're going through all this uh, drama, have you healed? Has she become your, like your solace? Where are you with your daughter relationship-wise? Uh, I didn't like that child. Still? I hated my girl until she was seven years. Yeah. Yeah, so... But so, you just move it around with her. Mm, yeah. Because now where do you take her? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you see now my daughter loved me. Mm. I remember one time she was about, because it, it, it took a while for that relationship to be restored. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, now of course now fast forward. So mm -hmm. she's I think 11 mm -hmm. and we are going somewhere with her and we are actually using a matatu. So you see the way sometimes these matatu guys will, it's a stage, yes, but he shukishas the child. Mm. Anna kushukisha kwanza. Mm. Then the baby is there. Mm. That baby wanted to jump from a moving matatu. Wow. She always thought I would leave her. There was always mm. that thought. No. So all her, even today, mm -hmm. I go for missions and she's like, when are you coming back? Are you oh. sure you're coming back on? Oh, you know, so like it, it formed in her that mom might leave. Might leave me. And and many times, one, even when she's still, there's a time we're in with her in town. That is just very recent. Mm -hmm. I know the way sometimes in town, you yeah, know, the there's commotion. a lot of, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she, I can see her, but she can't see me. The way she was looking for me and panicking and just, you know, she just thought this one has left me. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a journey. It's It's been... One of the things I've had to deal with is the spirit of rejection mm. and because mm. it's so rubs on her mm -hmm. because I've had to deal with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've had to really, you know, every time it's praying and canceling everything, every seed I planted. Yes, yes. I so I've, I've had a lot of work to do with my child. And now uh, are you guys in a safe space? <laughs> ah, she's my bestie. <laughs> Oh no. And and did someone walk you through that journey? Did someone walk you through the healing? Or it's just you and God? Me and God. And when did you realize you needed to walk the journey? So anywho, um, because God places people in your life strategically, mm -hmm. I remember when this girl was I think about five, six years. Then now since I'm in Nairobi, I live in Langata and now I'm in my church, the church that I'm in currently, you mm -hmm. know. And and my bishop has always been, the my bishop and, and, and the wife, they've been like parents to me. Mm. So they took me, you know, with all, and, and I was such a mess. Mm -hmm. And because I remember my bro one time went to my bishop and was like, hey, you should hear my sister sing. You know, my brother is such a drunkard. <laughs> <laughs> because church is it. Yeah. So he would tell anyone, hey, you need to hear my sister sing. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the bishop and he's, he's now trying to, and he's like, mm, mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, so of course now we finally met with the bishop. He was like, ah, okay. So that's how you know, I became, you know, I just joined the worship team. Right. No probation, no nothing. No, no. Oh, oh. But all this while I'm singing, God is using me, but I'm so bitter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Until one time God tells me, you have to decide. You have to keep these things away. Mm -hmm. Or there's nowhere you're going with this. It was such, I heard the voice of God so clearly. Wow. And I had to call now my baby's dad and ask for forgiveness and also tell him I've forgiven you. Just let go. And I let go of so many things. So that was now it for me. Wow. Then I began just now starting, to, and and my bishop and 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 the the wife they've always loved me so much. Mm -hmm. So I always say, 
have not been really alone. Wow. They've, they've walked this journey with me in my mistakes. You know, we still do so many crazy things, but they've been like literal parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember one time I was ministering <laughs> and I had such an urge to smoke. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and then I had stopped smoking, mm -hmm. but I had such an urge. To, I even had a, a, a matchbox in my pocket. Wow. I was just waiting for the service to end so I can't go smoke. Wow. This is, and I was like, God, help me. Mm, mm. I need to also forgive myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been God. I tell people I'm God's favorite child. I'm you my are. daddy's girl. You are, because, you know, I'm just looking, <laughs> I'm looking back at what you're saying, Maureen, mm. and I see every step when you got pregnant, there was a family there mm. for you. Mm. When you came mm. to Nairobi, there was Betty yes. there for you. Like when you wanted to leave that man's house, there was another person. Yes. There. It's like literally God just sends yes. guardian angels for yes. you. Yes. And that truly, when he says he'll never leave us, or even when we're orphans, he's still going to be there. I believe that. I see that. So I, I want to see how you settled back to uh, Nairobi. Uh -huh. how, how was the coming back for you? So, so that was it. Um, so when I came to Nairobi, and now, of course, I'm, I'm in Eternal Life Church, mm -hmm. and um, Bishop and Mom have accepted me and, you know, just taken me in. Wow. And so life is a bit easy because you have a fallback, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, plan but then I still also had a band I had a band you do secular music you do actually just perform at gigs mm -hmm. so travel to go do performances and stuff but now I was in Nairobi okay you know so my brother would be in a the house then my sister was paying the house all right in Langata uh -huh. until one time she decides hey chick go mm -hmm. get married <laughs> she three was out. <laughs> Me, I was out of Nairobi. <laughs> I came back to an empty house. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> and I was homeless for three months. Hey, and where? You... <laughs> <laughs> I would sleep anywhere in a salon. I remember there's a kijiji in Langata. Mm -hmm. So I'd walk with Latifa. And this whole time, God somehow didn't allow anybody close to me to know what's going on. Not even the church. Wow. And I'm homeless. Mm. But even in that time, God also just now um, ordained a, a Muslim, a sheikh. A sheikh. Mm -hmm. He would come up to the entrance of your church, pick me, go buy food, and you say, I'm going to have a kesho. Ah, yeah. I'm going to have a kesho. What? Are you your favorite? Yeah, so... <laughs> That has been me with God. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's been a journey. So slowly now just doing what I loved, which is music. Mm -hmm. When I design pieces, I also find healing. Mm -hmm. When I design a new piece, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. all right. Is that a piece of yours yes. that you're wearing? Yes. Wow. Let's, you know, I just want you to uh, maybe take a minute right now and speak to someone that feels left. Mm hmm because what I'm getting, it's how God watches over. You know, yours is a case of even when you're faithless, mm. I mm. still remain faithful. Mm. Like mm. someone is in that place where they feel they are rejected. They mm. feel abandoned. Mm. And not just that, but I also want you to address someone that is battling rejection because mm. you've had to pray over mm. your daughter mm. against it because mm. in a way you contributed to it. Right. Maybe what are the do's, what mm. are the prayer points, what's the direction? Mm -hmm. And I believe this is your camera. Okay. All right. Um, there's a scripture, uh, Psalm 126. Psalm 126 says, you know, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them who dreamed, mm -hmm. you know. That has always been it for me that, you know, sometimes you're in a situation and you're actually asking yourself, when will you come out of this? Or rather, what is going to be, you know, uh, the outcome of this? So it doesn't really matter. I mean, God is the author of times and seasons. And God, it's amazing how he knows us, even in our silent, you know, moments, those moments when you think, ah, you're done for. It actually says, scripture says that he's a God who actually determines your beginning from the way it's ending. 
So I have had to remind myself every time I go back to scripture, I actually can't live without, you know, reading the word of God. It's like, you know, uh, taking medicine, mm -hmm. you know. So you are there and you're feeling rejected. You're feeling so alone. You feel like things are not working for you. I am here to tell you that there's a God who loves you beyond what people have actually, you know, branded you and what situations you're going through, you know. And he will make everything beautiful in his own time. All you need to do is just focus on him. Cry out to him. He says, when you call unto me, I will hear and I will answer. Amen. And show you great and mighty things. That's the faithfulness of our God. So don't be discouraged. And keep reminding yourself of who you are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, Maureen, I'm also looking at you, your story. And mm -hmm. I see trauma. Yeah. I mm. see from your dad mm. to the second dad mm. to how your mom died, mm. you know, just knowing so well it's mm. a man that caused this. Mm. And I'm just thinking maybe even as you're locked up in that house by mm. that other man mm. and seeing the violence, mm. you're thinking, this is what happened to my mom. Mm. I don't know if you're thinking maybe I'm about to depart mm. like she did, you know, and probably that trauma also informs your choices mm. in maybe I don't want to get married how did you get over the trauma, if at all you did? Well, life is a journey. I can't lie to you that I have fully gotten over that. I still get scared, you know. Because mm. when you shout at me, I'm like, you know. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, I'm, when a male uh, person shouts at me, I feel like they're going to hit me. Oh, wow. And also when I'm locked up in a room with a, with a, 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 a male uh figure also mm. gets scared. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's something that I've had to, you know, every day uh, deal with and keep reminding myself that, you know, I mean, you can do it. I mean, it's all right. Mm, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I mean, a day at a time. A day at a time. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to becoming someone's wife Amen. in the near future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, amen. And uh, maybe I want you to also pray for us. Yes. You know, someone mm. is watching and they don't know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Mm. So maybe I just want you to maybe look back into the camera and yeah. lead them to Christ. Mm -hmm. Let them come to, the, there's assurance. Mm. Even when you go through that little fear that creeps in, mm. just knowing that Jesus is in control mm. is a consolation. Mm. Yeah, maybe lead them to Christ. Well, um, and so for you who's out there and you feel like you're at crossroads, really, and um, you're wondering which way to go, Jesus, Jesus has always been a sure, like the sure way, a sure foundation. I remember when Jesus was telling the disciples when he was about to depart, and he was telling them that he is going to prepare a place for them, you know, and he kept telling them that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So meaning that there's nothing, there's, there's no situation that can be better except in him and by him and through him. And Jesus has always had his arms wide open. You know, all sinners, everybody, with all the filth, he's willing and ready to accept you. So you're there and you want to accept him um, and you feel like you just want to receive him in, his, in your heart. Please just say this prayer after me. You say, Lord Jesus. I come before you and I accept that I am such a wreck and such a sinner. And I accept that things have been happening that I don't really like. But now I also accept that I have become so vulnerable and I need your help. So Lord Jesus, please, please come into my life. And from today, I just want to renounce everything that I have done, all the bad and just accept you and your ways. And I pray that you may just, you know, wipe away and blot out all the iniquities and write my name in the book of life. So Lord, I thank you for these uh, children of yours, oh God. 
And I pray, Jehovah Lord, that you will strengthen them, O King of Kings. I pray that you will be the way and the truth for them. And I pray, King of Glory, that at the end of it all, they'll always hear that clear, still, small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. I thank you, Lord, for your presence even in this studio, and we bless your name. Thank you, Father. All glory and honor returns to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. There is a number just scrolling through your screens. You can call us, talk to us. Let us know you've given your life to Christ. You've made that believer's prayer. It is amazing when we get to know and celebrate that great testimony in your life. As we finish up, Maureen, how can we get your music? How can we get in touch with you for such beautiful ornaments? Yeah. Um, I'm Maureen Ashira everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I actually did um, a live recording in December, and I'm just releasing the songs, you know. Mm -hmm. One um, by one. Uh, one by one. So Maureen is M-A-U-R-Y-N, Ashira. Mm -hmm. So you go to YouTube, there's a lot of work that's there. Awesome. Yeah, so I also have a page for my um, jewelry. It's Maureen's Jewelry. Mm -hmm. And I also do um, a bit of uh, fashion, you know, just, just trying to be a fashion consultant. Oh, wow. So I have, um, you can find me on IG at Maureen's Fashion Closet underscore KA. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure having you. Thank you. I appreciate thank your you. presence you. here. Mm. All right. Thank you. That's all the time we had here on Testify. We do this again next week by the grace of God. Remember, you are accepted. You are loved. You keep on affirming yourself in and through the word of God. My name is Maria Makao Mondi. God bless.